Hello everyone, this is Ilonzo. Want to know how to get your first cloud job? Then please register for our webinar. We'll teach you everything that you need to know and answer your questions along the way. Hope to see you there. Hello everyone, this is Ilonzo. Want to know how to get your first cloud job? Then please register for our webinar. We'll teach you everything that you need to know and answer your questions along the way. Hope to see you there. My name is Richard Furr, and I can say I am cloud hired. That yes, come and join and get cloud hired. I'm cloud hired. I'm cloud hired. I'm cloud hired. Hey, go, go cloud architect family. I'm cloud hired. Always good to keep them up. Well, 
I'm cloud hired, guys! So I'll just say I'm cloud hired. I'm cloud hired. I'm cloud hired. Thanks to go cloud. Architects. It worked for me, and now I'm cloud hired. Because because of Google Architect program, I am cloud hired. See! I am cloud hired. Thank you, Mike and the Glow Cloud team. All right, welcome everybody to another episode of Head in the Clouds from Go Cloud Careers. My name is Chris Johnson. I am the Chief Operating Officer, and I'm joined by Alonzo, who's our Chief Marketing Officer. And we've got a special guest that's going to be joining us tonight. We will be bringing them in shortly. But before we do some introductions, uh, this is our weekly show where we come to unwind and have some fun, but still talk about topics that are important to you. Uh, so this week, we're going to be talking about focus. And if you know me, you know <laughs> that I'm a big proponent of being focused. Oh, yeah. uh, our guests probably might have something to say differently about that from a previous life of mine. <laughs> but uh, but yes, so we're going to be talking about tech career success. We're going to talk about focusing on your goals, focus and tech career success, um, focus and achievement. And just if you haven't figured it out, the importance of focus. So with that in mind. Give me a hashtag, hashtag tech career success in the chat box and, uh, and we'll get started. So um, again, uh, my name is Chris Johnson, Chief uh, Operating Officer and Alonzo here, our Chief Marketing Officer. As you can see, it's just us tonight. We, we, we mm -hmm. told Mike that he needed to take a, a night break. off. He needed to take a break. Uh, I'm sure our students uh, enjoyed having him in class earlier today um presenting their uh business solutions architecture solutions uh to mike and i think alonzo right didn't they oh yeah yeah they were killing it today they you know everybody always has room to grow but it was impressive how they they laid it out articulated um there were some sharp sharp presenters today in in style as well as execution so hats off to everybody today Yep, yep, yep. So, and I know, let me acknowledge, uh, it, it, if you're wondering where we've been for a couple of weeks, well, we've been taking our time. We've been been uh, working on things behind the scenes, been taking some time for ourselves. Last Tuesday was Valentine's Day, so, you know, we had to make sure that we did not put ourselves in the doghouse without a reason. Like no reason to, no reason to do a show if it's going to get us in trouble. So we took we took a week off for that. So um, so yeah. So I see some uh, I see some familiar faces, some familiar names there in the yep. chat box. I see uh, Lady Godiva, Lady Godiva. That's too long. I'm not sure if she's talking about uh, where where we were the past couple of weeks, but yeah, it's got Derek out there. That's Fernando. too long. Yep. All right. So Maroon, uh, yeah. got some tech. Oh, that's you, Alonzo. Tech career success. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Well, yeah, great, uh, Fernando. Yeah. So, all right. Let me tell everybody about a couple of things that we've got going on just uh, just to get this housekeeping out of the way. So, as you can see up here at the top, we've got the How to Get Your First Cloud Job webinar. Uh, that's going to be coming up on Thursday. Uh, Thursday, two days from now, Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And we're also going to be doing one uh, on Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time as well. Uh, had some requests for evening webinars, so we've started putting those into the rotation. And uh, Fernando, I got my hair cut today, and you really have to say something about my gray. That come on. I got my hair cut less than eight hours ago, and you're already commenting on the gray. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Fernando. But um, makes you look distinguished. Yeah, we'll go with distinguished. <laughs> but, but yeah, so make sure you register for that webinar. We'll talk about everything you need to know about becoming a cloud architect, uh, regardless of your experience. Um, and we'll talk about what hiring managers are looking for. Uh, in general and in cloud architects. We'll talk about uh, HR and their crazy job descriptions, asking for you know 15 years of experience along with 26 gold medals and 85 years of uh, Kubernetes experience or you know, 110 years of uh, Excel experience. 
whatever it might be. Speaking of which, I actually talked to my wife this weekend while we were hanging out, asked, uh, asked her about her hiring, and she's like, yeah, I have a contradictory job description out there. And I'm like, <laughs> really? You got a contradictory job description out there? So, <laughs> so as I always say, job descriptions don't make any sense. No, so, none. Uh, so yeah, I thought I'd throw that in there. That that I, she told me that on Sunday when we were having breakfast, we were talking about that. But so, and then of course, we'll spend a good portion of our time telling you exactly what you need to become a cloud architect. So make sure you join in on that uh, on that webinar. It's free. We'll be there to answer your questions. Me, Mike, Alonzo, we'll all be there to help you, give you guidance, hopefully uh, show you what we can do to help you uh, reach your goals. If you choose to do it with us, great. If you choose to do it on your own, great. Whatever we can do to, to help give you some clarification and some guidance. So, so that's coming up on Thursday and on Monday. Also, as a lot of you probably know, we have been having a discount countdown going on. We had a 60% discount. And that 60% discount was available for 30 days or a month. I can't remember if it's exactly 30. I think it was actually a little over 30 days. Um, that discount was available through February 14th. It's no longer available, but mm -hmm. we have 50% off discount available for you now. And that will be available through March 14th and only through March 14th. That's it. And only while enrollment slots are available. So after that point, the 50% discount won't be available anymore. We want to be upfront and honest and tell you, hey, this is when it's available. Take advantage of it because it's going away. It's not going to be there again. So make sure to take advantage of that. This gives you access to over 500 hours worth of training content and training material. It also gives you access to three, three, one, two, three live classes for an entire year roughly 150 live classes for an entire year with the 50% off discount makes it 1249 for $1,249. You get 150 roughly live classes for an entire year. That's basically less than two days pay of the average cloud architect. So I can't overemphasize the, the, the return on investment value there for that. So make sure you take advantage of that. If you've got the opportunity, don't hesitate. Uh, regularly priced at $24.99, got a 50% discount available for it. And um, we want you to take advantage of that. And then this Friday, we will have a winning the interview webinar. So we are big about winning the interview. Because if you can win the interview, not only do you get the job, but you set up the foundation for everything that comes after that job. Most jobs have a salary range from the lowest paid to the highest paid in the same role. And it's the, 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 what determines you being the lower paid or the higher paid is not just experience. Mm. It's how you do on the interview. And if you can do well in the interview, then you get you can get in that higher range and that sets the foundation for everything that comes after that your bonus your compensation your incentives your next promotion your next uh next title everything builds on top of that so we've got a interview webinar that we're going to be doing on friday that you can register for as well that's going to be completely free to you we'll be sharing with you what you need to do to win that interview um so Make sure you register for that. But anyway, I've said a lot. I've said a lot. I've said a lot. I've said a lot. Alonzo, you've got anything to say before we get rolling? No, I'm, I'm ready to get cracking. I am really interested in, in our conversation, discussion, along with our uh, guest that's going to be on deck in a few. So um, let's roll. Let's get it going. All right. Let's see if I've got the right music. <laughs> no, not, 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 that, not that one. Not, not that one. Right. You could have used it earlier for my my no, no. There, there we, we go. go. <laughs> oh, there he is. All right. Hello, Dr. Johnson. <laughs> Dr. J. 
Good afternoon, gentlemen. And I use that term very loosely. Good afternoon. <laughs> well, when Mike's not here, I guess we'll take that. <laughs> we'll take okay. it. Yeah, yeah, Mike's not there. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they let us run the show, so we'll see what happens. But um, all right. So uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, Dr. Johnson is a uh, he's a well, what's your what, what's your actual title title? Well, the, the official title is Associate Professor of Management. There we go. There you go. We won't go into the other titles. <laughs> no, we will not go into any of the other titles. It, it depends on who calls you that, huh, Dr. Johnson? <laughs> That's it. You know, cat herder or whatever, you know. Okay. Just... We have we have our fair share of cat herders. I'm sure oh, yeah. I'm yeah. sure they'll they'll let us know in the chat box. But so Dr. Johnson has, uh, for those of you that don't know, he's a, a, I've already forgotten it. Did you say associate professor of management? <laughs> get, him, get him, Dr. J. Get him. What's our, to what's our topic for tonight? I forgot. Oh, well, there you <laughs> go. Focus. Okay. <laughs> okay. So Dr. Can you Johnson. you find it with both hands in a roadmap? That's what I want to know. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a flashlight. I might be able to find it. There you go. <laughs> Oh, so Dr. Johnson is an associate professor of management at the University of Tennessee Martin. He has uh, been a college professor for 42 years, 43, I'm 40, 40. Okay. Yeah. I can't remember. Anyway. So, uh, so yes, he is here to share his wisdom with us. And I don't use that term lo <laughs> loosely. I, I use that term wholeheartedly. So, uh, so yeah, so we're going to be talking about focus tonight, um, and I'm definitely looking forward to hearing what uh, what each of us have to say. So, uh, before we get, I guess, to start off with, I guess we can talk about what, uh, like, when when you hear focus, what does what do you what do you think of when you hear focus? What's what comes to mind when you're when someone mentions focus to you, whether it's in a work setting or a professional, a professional setting or a personal setting. Um, Dr. Johnson, we can start with you. Okay, well, I'm going to talk to you from a professor standpoint. When I discuss focus with my students, it's for them to pay attention, to listen to what's being asked of them to do. So that, for example, I have in one of my classes a project that is due at the end of the semester. And I tell them they need to, we have what we call work days in the class. Uh, so many days of the semester, they come in and it's entirely devoted to me answering questions, them asking questions they may have about their project. And it's very uh, entertaining at times to see how many of those students are focused on their project. The last time I had a work day, I think I had about 85% of the students come in and had absolutely nothing to share. And I try to explain to them that this is an opportunity for you to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with the Dr. Johnson because he is not going to try to carry on those conversations over email. And um, so I'm looking forward to the next class in which I have those, um, you know, work days and see if they've done any better. And I'll give you another example of focus or lack thereof, you know, more likely you will find most people have a lack of focus, you know, especially the folks that I deal with. Um, I set up my class this semester. When you take exams, like exam one would open on a certain day. And from that day to the end of the semester, you can take the exam at any time you want to take it. It's online. And you can take it as many times as you want to take it to try to improve your grade. But what you need to understand is that your final grade for that particular exam is the average of all the attempts. Ooh. So if you take and make 50, yeah, there you go. You see, you caught on real quick. If you make 50, then you got to make an 80, then you got to make it, and you know, it keeps going. Well, I tell my students, you really need to pay attention once in your terms tonight is focus. You need, you need to take focus and everything. Do you know right now that next week, the second exam will be given? I have 10 people that have not taken the first exam yet. So these things are piling up. In my opinion, they are not focused, okay? And it's going to come back to bite, and it's going to bite real hard. And when they come to me and say, what can you do, Dr. Johnson? Can you help me? <laughs> and I'm pretty much going to have to take a deep breath because if it was 20 years ago, I would attend, I would, you know, approach it one way. Now, I, you know, you got to 
you know, pat everybody on the head and tell them how wonderful life is. But um, so I'm going to say, you you know, maybe next semester you will focus better in this class. So um, I'm sure that you folks in what we call the real world out there dealing with the, with, you know, potential students that you deal with may have a different experience with focus. But um, you want to give examples in your personal life. I promise you, if you want to learn focus, get married. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that is, they will that tell you that. that they want you to do something. And if you do not do it, they will remind you what, 10 or 12 times a day? A day. How about an hour, sir? Okay. There you go. <laughs> so, but no, that, no, seriously. Um, you know, uh, I've, I've noticed that when I'm dealing with people in the industry, dealing with people just in the local community and different stores and shops and so forth, it's very difficult for them to focus sometimes when I go in with a particular question. A partic I, you know, I'm wanting you to address my question, give me my answer and let me go. And dear Lord, sometimes, you know, it takes them an hour to do it. So that's my uh, introduction to focus in the shall we say, challengings of those at times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. That's wisdom right there. An I'm, trying, I'm trying to figure out this. I can only imagine how many students have probably taken that five times and don't realize that 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 is not to their benefit. It is so bad. <laughs> Honestly, now look, I even put in the syllabus, this is how it works and, and says, if you take it three times, and you make this grade, this grade, and this grade. Here's your average. Oh, you, know? you even you, so you even provide the math that says oh, yeah, if you do a fifty and hundred, you get a it's a seventy-five. Yeah, <laughs> so there you go. You know, I break down what used to be second grade math. Now it's tenth grade math. <laughs> and I break that down. You know, yeah. so they and they still don't understand that. They'll say they'll come back. Well, I thought I was going to get the highest. I said, show me in the syllabus where it says highest. Your highest school. Yeah. Operating operative word average. <laughs> yeah. Average. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. 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 They yeah, that that I don't know. It's it's just a lot of people, I think, because everyone, it's the gratification to receive something is so swift in everything we do, cooking with microwaves, TikToking, social media, you want that attention, you want to be the first to do something for that instant gratification. No one seems to think about or focus on what those ramifications are or the process to get from A to Z and what that's going to cost. It's just almost like a knee jerk, a, a reaction instead of a thought to everything that's going on these days. Well, they, have no, they have no idea what opportunity cost is. No. You know, no that's if, you no. Want, if you want to choose A, you're giving up B, C, D, E, and F. Yeah. They don't analyze. They don't focus. They don't research. They don't do they. They want what, you know, what am I going to get right now? Like you say, Alonzo, yeah. right now, not, they don't worry about six months, a year, 10 years. No. You need to focus on what those decisions, what impact it's going to have for your long-term success. Right. Absolutely. So I, I've got, I've got a lot of threads I could pull on that based on the notes that I made in preparation for this. But before I start pulling those threads, I want to hear what Alonzo says about focus just in general. What, what do okay. You think I think Focus to me is the absolute dedication of all personal awareness and applying it to a specific task, conversation, or thought. That's how I consider focus. Like case in point, focus is, and a perfect example is, is if you're going to put a hammer to a nail, you better focus. If, you, uh, uh, if you're trying to do something that will result in lost pain or something unpleasant, it enables focus. So although it may not apply from a negative standpoint, applying focus towards your studies, towards um, things that are of importance, requires that dedication to apply every effort, every bit of awareness that you have into that specific task, conversation, or or action. So it's important for that. And, and, I, and I think that too many people have substituted that for 
a quick response, like I said before, instead of understanding, you know, what that's the opportunity cost, like Dr. Dr. Johnson has specified. Uh, yeah, uh, I both both of what you guys are saying is is tying into the into to this thoughts that I've got as well. Mm -hmm. And as I see Alange and Alange uh, you love Angelo. Angelo has a question. So I, I do want to encourage people, if you've got questions, put them in the chat box. Yeah, throw them in. We won't, be, we, prob we won't be responding to them immediately, but we're going to be, we will be getting to them when we do our questions uh, throughout the uh, thing. So if you've got questions, put them in the, put them there in the chat box so that we can see them. I see Fernando's got them. Angelo's got them. So we'll be yeah. getting to those shortly. Um, but yeah, I definitely agree so I, I, I'm I'm of the same mindset with with Alonzo here, and, and I think uh, I think Dr. Johnson was saying a lot of it as well uh, underneath uh, on the on the underneath the surface there that um, look like when we talk about opportunity costs and when we talk talk about what what Alonzo was just talking about you, you have. A, if we're talking about focusing on something, first of all, you need to figure out, is it worth focus? Like hope, if we're having a conversation about something that you need to focus on, is it something that needs to be focused on, first of all? <laughs> and uh, is it important enough? And if it's important enough, then the problem that a lot of people, that I, I it seems like a lot of people have, and there's a lot of material out there about this. Is people don't have trouble focusing. Mm -hmm. They have a trouble mm -hmm. making a decision. Yeah. And because they can't make that decision to, to commit or focus or this is the thing that I need to yeah. do. This is what I need to do. This is what I need to dedicate my time to. This is what I need to dedicate my attention to. This is what I need to dedicate my concentration to. Because they can't make those decisions, and I, 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 I I'm a victim of that as well in the past. Um, yeah. uh, <laughs> I wasn't always the best at focusing and committing to things. Um, but uh, yeah, see that Dr. Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> leave leave but, it to uh, a fan and tell the truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and Miss Johnson's probably sitting off camera over there laughing her butt off right now. So, <laughs> she said, "Give me another martini." That was a good one, <laughs> but. But yeah, so but but it boils down to decision making because the the act of focusing is deciding, okay, I've got to do this. This is the thing that I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. It's not that it, it's not a permanent decision, you know. It, it's like okay, for the next four hours, I'm going to do this. This is the thing that I need to accomplish, or for the next hour, or you know, if we're talking on a bigger scale, for the next four weeks, this is where the majority of my concentration and effort and energy is going to be going like but a lot of people can't make those decisions yeah um you know it it, it could be as simple as okay and, and i say simple because it, it's it's a, it's it's seemingly simple but it's hard to implement mm. it could be as simple as not reading your emails for two hours after you wake up how many people read their emails as soon as they start their day and because of that there goes your focus for the entire day you've yeah. had you've not had an opportunity to to set a like set a foundation for your day but that's a simple example of of allowing yourself the opportunity to focus and make decisions um and because people and this is what comes to mind when i'm thinking of focus is these little things that that that, that add up to people not being able to focus or someone not being able to focus. Um, I'd love to hear what, what you guys have to say about that. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this, Chris. Um, you know, I, I have a lot of different irons in the fire. Oh, you yeah. Know, because as a professor, we have to prepare for our classes. We are required to do research, publications in journals, um, assist, you know, consulting and that type of stuff. And you make some very good points here, uh, you know, distractions, you know, you can come out with the best intentions You have the best intentions in the world to get something accomplished in a day. You know, you can have your to-do list, you know, set to set aside and so forth. 
But what I find, what I find that I have to do that helps me a lot is to be able to focus. I've got to get away from distractions and I'm not talking only about the cell phone. And I'm talking about the emails, but what I do rather than sitting in my office at the university, I go to what I call my hidey hole. I get away. There's a place on campus that I go to. I go to the university library. They have rooms there for faculty in which they have internet access and so forth. And it works best for me. You have to figure out what works best for you to help you focus. And I go in there with a goal. And it's not so much that I'm going to work two hours, three hours, four hours. Here is my goal for the day. And I'm going to, if it takes me an hour, I'm going to do it in an hour. If it takes me two, I'm going to stay the two hours. And I'm going to get that objective accomplished. I'll get that goal accomplished. Now, I do understand sometimes you can't do everything in a day or two or three hours. But you can break down that overall goal, that big goal, into small parts. And that's what I do. Three or four days a week, probably five days a week, a lot of times, I'm at that library. I spend a little bit of time at the office, but then I get away. The only person that I will answer a telephone call from is your mother. Other than that, I'm not going to answer a call. I'm out of, I've made my office over, so I'm not expected to be there. But I am focused on accomplishing that particular goal. And that's what I'm going to do. And um, that helps me a lot. And, you know, it takes a little time to figure out, you know, how much I can get done in a particular time. Sometimes I set goals that are too high. You remember when you talk about goal setting, they got to be a realistic. I learned very quickly some goals I've set that are not realistic. But as you all know, goals are not in concrete. You adjust mm -hmm. and it helps you focus. What also helps me focus is after about an hour, sometimes 45 minutes, I have to get up and walk around a little bit. Go down and get a cup of coffee, get something to drink come back and I'm refocused. I got that energy again. Some people use power naps. I don't know. But I also set a reward for myself. Once I, if I reach that goal, then I am going to reward myself. Mm -hmm. And it may, you know, very little, you know, some people would say, well, that's not really a reward, what you come up with, but it is to me. You yeah. know, I recognize that I've accomplished something. It's that intrinsic recognition, that mm -hmm. intrinsic reward. So that helps me do it. Get away from the office. Get away from home. I love your mother to death and everything. But I, you know, I get here. I can't do a lot. I got too many distractions. So I've got to get to a place where I'm not distracted. Yeah, couldn't have, I couldn't have said it better. It's, it's you know, I like to use analogies and metaphors and things, but it's it's like focus. A laser is a concentration of the different light colors in the spectrum. If you if one is deviated. You know, you're just going to have red, blue, green, yellow light. But if you focus all those lights, it creates the intensity of the laser, which can go through different things, ergo your your focus. So if you like, like, say, for instance, multitasking, that's actually it doesn't really exist. It's the ability because you can't do all these things at once. You're in a probably a round robin for you know format i do this i do that i do this i do that one through five tasks but ultimately if you spread yourself around too thin nothing gets really accomplished if you focus on one bucket of water and filling that up then go to bucket two three four and five so that you have uh, not only a sense of accomplishment but a goal fulfilled so that you can move on to the other because if you try to multitask in an environment that's not conducive to you getting things done, you're going to walk off frustration, frustrated, tasks undone, goals unrealized. And again, you don't even know when you're going to have that opportunity to do it again. So going into a place that is devoid of distractions, like case in point, I'm a husband, I'm a father, my kids, aka time thieves, I have to really sometimes literally hide in the house to try to get things done because, you know, dad, I need this. I need help with homework. I need to go to the store. I need, I need, I need, I need. Then we move that out the way. And then as these two gentlemen know, you're going to have the honeydew list. Honey, I need, I need, I need. So by the time you do all of this, nothing gets done that you need to have done. So it's a matter of prioritizing, uh, coming up with an, an area where you are able to get your tasks done, plan your work, work your plan, execute it, get to a certain point where you feel that you can dog ear that, that effort, 
move on to the next hour, the next day or whatever. But it's all about planning for success, planning your progress and using that focus to get you from point A to point Z or wherever. What about you, Chris? Can't hear you. That's because I got too much to say. I had to mute myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I got. I've got lots to say here. Like, I, so I'm trying to trying to figure out where we started at. But I, yeah, I we we threw a lot I in. The where we start, I can't remember where we started at. But I'm, I'm going to go since I can't remember where we started at. I'm going to go with what you, you just made me think about. So there's there is. Um, I guess the story is the best way to the best thing to call it. But Warren Buffett. Uh, if, if for, for those of you that are familiar with Warren Buffett, the Oracle of Omaha, the billionaire investor, mogul guy, whatever you want to call him. Um, so he actually, I don't know if there's a name for it, but the story uh, is that he asked his pilot one day, he said, he was trying to, trying to encourage him. Uh, he said, I need, I want you to write down your, 25 goals, 25 goals that you want to accomplish. The you know, pilot wrote down 25 goals. And then, and so then Warren Buffett told him, okay, now I want you to circle the five, your top five goals out of those 25. And after some time, the guy came back with this circled top five and Warren asked him, he said, okay, so what, what is it? What do you get from this? And he said, well, these five are my top priority. These are the ones that I'm going to focus my time, effort, and energy, and, and, and dedication and commitment to. And, uh, and he asked him, he said, well, what about the other 20? And he said, well, those will be the ones that I do when I have time. And Warren's like, no, no, those are your avoid at all cost because they will bring detriment and ultimately not allow you to accomplish those top five. Mm -hmm because you're going to try and focus when you've got time to do to do work towards these other 20 and you'll never reach your top five. Mm -hmm. Those five, the 20 out of those 25 avoid at all costs because you only have so much when, so when you started talking about your buckets of water, I was like, there we go. Like, I mean, yeah. because I'm, I'm, I'm visualizing trying to fill five <laughs> buckets of water. Yeah. I'm, not I'm gonna like, get you very I'm far. Like, yeah, this is not going to put out a fire. I'm like, <laughs> I need one bucket of water. It's completely full. Stuff is still burning, and you, you don't even have one bucket filled. Right. But it made, it, but it made me think about that. It's like, right. it, that, again, it's simple. Like, saying it is simple, but the doing it, um, the actual doing it, the, like, Oh, I remember what I was going to say. So uh, I do know that Dr. Johnson does practice that library thing because I used to wonder why he didn't answer my calls for a certain <laughs> period of time. <laughs> and now I realize why he doesn't answer my calls at certain times. Now you know. <laughs> she could tell. Uh, but it, it's, I mean, like I started to realize, wait, he's calling me back about the same time on a regular basis. So, okay, he's at the library. I got it now. But, um, Okay, so practice what you pre preach. Yes, there you go. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's simple to say, okay, I'm going to go to the library for two hours every Tuesday or three hours every Wednesday. It's simple to say it. But then to actually take that time away, a walk out of your office, away yeah. from the computer, away from your work, you just and walk done. off campus, Go in that library, shut the door, and set yourself down there and avoid everybody. Yeah. That's not simple. No. What's that so, old thing? The the more you plan life, the more life plans you. Yep. So that's um yeah, and I, I like the the multitasking thing. And I I remember when I was younger, I used to think that it was it was an attribute that I uh, that I put on my resume and I would I would talk about it in interviews about my ability to multitask um, but like there's a difference between typing out emails and listening to music like that's multitasking I can do that but multitasking is not like it, it, it when I'm when I'm thinking of multitasking and, and what I think others confuse for multitasking is the ability to multi concentrate. 
You you can't. I can't fully concentrate on that email and fully concentrate and appreciate every lyric and every instrument that's being played in that song while I'm trying to fully concentrate on typing this email. It's it, it's just not possible. Mm-hmm. Um, but if we talk about multitasking on a larger scale, like like what Dr. Johnson was saying, and like what we all experience, we've got multiple pot fire, you know, irons in the fire. We've got multiple pots on the stove boiling at the same time. But I don't have to try to do them all at the same time. And if I'm trying to do them all at the same time, or if I'm trying to do them, I've got three monitors in front of me right now. If I'm trying to do work on an Excel spreadsheet over here work on a video editing here and work on an email over here at the same time, or even within like, I'm going to do like 10 minutes of this, 10 minutes of this, 10 minutes of that. Like the brain doesn't work that way. Mm. The, 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 the having to, or even 30 minutes, I'm going to do 30 minutes of this, 30 minutes of that, 30 minutes of that. Like the brain can't work that way. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of people, like when I used to, when I was younger and would talk about multitasking, like that's what I would talk about. And that's what my colleagues and my contemporaries would think was good multitasking was the ability to try and accomplish all these same things, uh, all these things at the same time or within short time periods of each other. Yeah. But the amount of time that it takes for my brain, even if I'm just typing an email and I get interrupted by somebody that has a five minute conversation with me and I step out, grab a cup of coffee and have that conversation and come back. I've got to start all over. Like, even though the text, the copy of that email is in front of me, I've got to read the email and be like, okay, all right, I've got to mm-hmm. refigure this out. <laughs> you know, it's like a train of thought is just gone. You know, you take and- that on a grander scale of you trying to work on a project mm-hmm. and trying to multitask while you're working on a project or you're trying Let's talk, let's think of our students. Like you're trying to learn about networking and you're doing little chunks and then going and studying about storage. And then you're going and studying about load balancers or or whatever it might be. And you're trying to accomplish all these at the same time. I don't think it's gonna be successful, uh, as as successful as if you broke it up into bigger chunks. Uh, And, I'd like to hear whatever what what you guys have to say about multitasking in that standpoint because it we have to multitask but not not on a granular level we can't multitask on a granular level but we have to on a bigger bigger scale see i i think the problem with that chris is that taking it back to focus if you want to you can do you know jump and chew bubble gum at the same time. But the thing is, is that if you need to adhere to a specific uh, standard, if you will, like I need to give it a hundred percent. So if you're not giving your all because you're dividing your focus, Mm -hmm. how can you provide excellence? That's kind of like uh, the, the conundrum here. It's like, what are you going to do when I have three substandard items versus one quality item? Yep. And you ask yourself, what's going to be more valuable to that specific recipient? It's like just like uh, the average with the uh, uh, with, with with Dr. Johnson's execution. If they have three substandard test scores and you average that. I would not want to, you know, be there at the end of the class. So it's like, okay, wouldn't it stand to reason to eliminate that multitask application, focus on that execution to get a very good test score rather than roll the dice and get, you know, all these substandard test scores. So that's, that's my argument there. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me, let me maybe approach a different way. When I, when I, the term multitask to me, if I have a list of tasks that I want to get done, multitask to me is basically do task one, then task two, then task three. I am not going to spread myself thin, trying, as Alonzo and Chris have said, 
you know, I have limited resources, time, you know, whatever you want, other resources we have. Uh, time. So I'm going to address time. one. <laughs> time is Then the I'm going to address the other. Then I'm going to address the third. Now, yes, I may have a goal of accomplishing three or four tasks in one day, and I may only do one or two, but I still come away feeling good about what I have accomplished. Mm -hmm. So most of the time when people say multitask, as you folks are trying to say, they're trying to do two or three things at one time, mm -hmm. balls in the air. Not, I, I'm, that's not the way I do it, and I never have done that. I just address one, accomplish it, move on to the next, move on to the next. Something else that helps me focus is this. I don't. I try not to operate in a silo. I try to engage others that help me to focus. For example, I have research teams. You have Dr. Long, we have Dr. Johnson, and we have Dr. Fault. We divide the task up. And we hold each other accountable for getting those tasks done so that we can put a research article out there. So we're both standing, holding ourselves accountable to two other people. Well, three, really, if you include yourself. So if you can find folks that can help you focus. Now, a lot of times if you're working with folks that want to ride your coattails, that's not a good thing. Toss them, get rid of them. But, you know, my three, my other team members, man, we do a good job. You know, they push, we push each other. We get the task done. We move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I say in the, you know, you know, I have a problem with instructors or professors that come in and say, OK, we're going to do, you know, group work. And, and they toss a group work out there, but they give no recourse to handling folks that don't pull their weight. Mm -hmm. So whenever I do group work, I tell my folks, you can fire some. Mm -mm. Oh, I think we lost them. Can't hear you, Chris. Yeah, it looks like we lost him. Lost your connection. I'm let I'm letting him know we lost him. Um, yeah. So while we're waiting on uh, Doctor, oh, there, there, there he is. There he is. Okay. Well, like I was saying, you know, you know, I give people the ability to take the actions that are needed to not waste their time so that they can, as you say, focus on getting the project done. But working with someone that's going to hold you accountable, make sure that you're staying on task, mm -hmm. to me, that's focus. And again, I encourage all my students, focus on a class, focus on a project, accomplish what you want to do on that class or that project, then move on to something else. Divide your time. Yeah. For better or for worse, it seems to work for me and it works for my colleagues and for the students that sometimes listen, which isn't very often, yeah. it works for them. But think about this, folks. You know, and again, forgive me because I, I, I can't remember if 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 this if, if this conversation we're having are folks that have already signed up for your classes or whatever. But they need to understand the importance once they sign up for that class to stay focused on that. And the goal at the end is what? A good job, good paying job, security at home, security at work and the opportunity to grow and develop in that particular field. Yeah. I don't see why people can't get focused on that. I really don't. You know, back in the day when I was working on dissertation, 50% of the people that were in my dissertation program flunked out because they wouldn't finish the dissertation. Folks, that's writing a big term paper. Yeah. You just got to make five people happy. Well, really a good, strong chair. I made him happy and he, everybody else fell in line, but he had to be focused to do it. You know, I would spend, you know, I'd set aside three hours a day going to work on it because I couldn't work more than three hours. Then I'd have to move on to something else. So it's it's basically finding out what's important, prioritizing what's important, mm -hmm. focusing on it and moving ahead and being held accountable, whether you do it yourself or somebody else holds you accountable. Yeah, I think. And a lot of people. So a lot of people would say that nowadays there's too many distractions, mm -hmm. but there's always been distractions. Yeah, I don't like, buy that. When, when I, and Dr. Johnson will attest to this, like when I was younger, I didn't have Facebook. I didn't have YouTube. I didn't have um, any of this. I didn't have any of this. Like I might have, I think they may have, uh, AOL came out. <laughs> I was like, that was when I was in like middle school. AOL, AOL Messenger and 
Microsoft Messenger, and that, that was when I was in like middle school or high school. So like, and that, so, and we had phones with Snake, you know, the, not, not, not the, I had, I was limited in characters on a cell phone, you know, that, that type of thing. So, so that I didn't have the distraction, like young, when I was younger, but I had skateboarding, I had basketball, I had going outside and riding the neighbor's four wheelers that mom didn't know that I was riding, you know, that, <laughs> you know, those now. I had those types of distractions, uh, distract. There's always distractions to keep you from being focused. Um, so, you know, you were asking, you were saying, I don't, I don't know why people can't seem to, to, um, to, 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 to do it, but I, I, I get, I've got a pretty good reason. I've got a pretty good idea. I got, I got one. Hard. As well. hmm? It's hard. It's not easy. It's hard. That's. And so, the ability, the opportunity to distract yourself, regardless of what the, whether it's with a skateboard or a basketball or four wheeler or YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or going to the bar or going to the baseball game or going to the whatever, doing, you know, watching TV, watching Netflix. If it gets too hard or and I heard somebody that I was talking with the other day said this, and I heard it, and I'm like, well, I've heard that before, but I can't remember where. I get too close to being successful, and I let myself get distracted. I was like, okay, that kind of falls in line with the fear. It's too hard. Like, even though I am this close, like, I'm, I'm this close to success, that, 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 like in their mind, it's just like, okay, I gotta, I gotta, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let myself get distracted. I'm too close. It's weird. I, it's, I, but I've heard it and I've seen it before. Um, but, uh, but the, there's a lot of distractions. And I think the ability and the opportunity to, to step away from the thing that's hard is why a lot of people don't focus, uh, especially when yeah. it comes to something like, uh, like writing a dissertation or uh, learning a new career or something like that, or becoming an, uh, an elite basketball player. Um, I mean, you know, uh, Dr. Johnson, you know, uh, Will, the Reeds, Will Reed and Caleb Reed that I grew up with. Um, Caleb Reed was an amazing pitcher. But he was just a normal kid, also like he just any other kid on the street. <laughs> and, but he had the determination and the 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 follow through and the focus to become an amazing pitcher and ended up uh, playing uh, Division One <clears throat> baseball. And he was just a normal kid, but because he had that focus and that determination to to reach that goal, he went beyond everybody else that was in town. So, well, I think if you make a commitment to people, same distractions that I had. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But if you make a commitment to people too, a lot of times that helps me focus for myself because I've been working on, you know, Dr. Long and I are working on a project for you, Chris. And, you know, that we're going to be working with you very soon face to face and so forth. So we're focused on getting those, getting prepared for that. At least getting prepared is what we think we're prepared until you get here and tell us that we didn't know what we were doing. But, Anyway, we have been focused on that. Your mother can attest to the fact that each night now I'm spending two or three hours in the back going over different topics and so forth because I made a commitment. So it made me focus on that. So, you know, being held responsible a lot of times it will, will force someone to focus. You know, a lot of times, you know, if, if no, if you just come up with a goal for yourself and you, and you start working on it, you know, how easy it is to say, well, that's not really important. You know, I'll put that off. I'll put that off. You keep putting it off. But when you have someone that is have expectations for you, someone that is depending on you, mm-hmm. and you know, a lot of it, that will force you to focus. Yeah. And if it doesn't, then you're going to get a reputation out there very quickly of being someone that is unreliable. Yeah. And you yeah. will quit. That phone will quit ringing. It yeah. will. And, you know, I, I think there's two, there's also this other facet is that, like it goes right back to like, okay, you go through go cloud careers, you go to achieve your PhD, you go and, and work on that dissertation. However, it's a long-term goal, if you will, months or whatever, 
versus the instant gratification that they'll get somewhere else. And then they need more and more and more, which creates that distraction. Ultimately, it self-defeats themselves, themselves, and then they just want to throw in the towel and quit because they they spend so much effort and time and energy trying to get that gratification that once it's time to do the work, they become defeated and ultimately psych themselves out and quit. So it's like everyone who needs to, just like the goals that, that you talk about with Warren Buffett, it's like, okay, let's think about the time frame that needs to happen for you to achieve your goal. Look at it, maybe give yourself a two or three week buffer for that for incidentals. However, look and I, be, and I strongly believe in vision boards, whether it's electronic one or physical one, look at this thing that you want to see. You want to see Cloud Architect. You want to see PhD behind your name. Print it out. Put it on something that you can look at every day and also put on the things that will happen when you achieve this goal. You'll have uh, you become a, a, the status. You'll be able to have accessibility to better jobs higher income, be able to take care of your family. And with more money become uh, comes more options for you to do things in life. So having that focus and using tools like that to get you there, I think is really paramount. Okay. You know, to, to Roger co coattails on that, you know, back in the old days, here you go, you computer people out there, they used to have these screen savers that would do move around mm -hmm. on the screen, you know, all that kind of good stuff. And one the one of the things that I would put on mine when I was working through my PhD, you know, come into the office, it turns it on, the screensaver pops up, and it, over and over it said, "Do something, do mm -hmm. something, just keep, just do something." And you know, eventually, you know, you get tired of reading it, and then get up and go do something. Also, I would have two old geezers that would come down to my office every Monday morning, and they would look at me and say, "So." what have you done on your dissertation this past week? And I go, Oh dear Lord, I got to do something. So I don't have to listen to them because they would ride my <laughs> rear end. And then they would say, then I had one that would say, if you would get this done, the good life waits for you, get it done. Yep. And I see that in just about any project, especially what you were trying, what you have to offer to these individuals where they are now versus where they can be. If they can take a little time, in the grand scheme of things, focus on the projects, focus on the education that you're providing. My goodness, the good life waits. Mm -hmm. It's there waiting on them. Yeah. And I think so there's there's something to be said. Uh, we're, we're starting to talk about long term projects and even even our, our long term goals, even on midterm goals and, and mid, mid whatever you want to call them. Uh, there's something I saw a comment in the chat box and it it. it, it it ties into what Dr. Johnson said earlier. So I'm going to put it up and then we, we can actually take a couple of questions as well and then get back to the conversation. But yeah. Ben puts, uh, there's nothing wrong with walking away and watching Netflix for 30 minutes after you've been buried in a book for three hours. You just have to manage it. Yeah. And Dr. Johnson, earlier, you said something about rewards. And that's that's kind of like, okay, I've, I've done this for, I've, I've done this. I've reached this point. I've mm -hmm. I've done something. I've accomplished this. Whatever it might be. All right. Let me go. To the, let me go watch uh, the latest Bourne movie, and uh, or let me go go out to the baseball game and enjoy my myself. I've done yeah. something. I've accomplished this. Not the whole thing, because it's a big. It's a dissertation. It's a 200, 200 page dissertation. I've. There's going to be days where I'm not even writing. I'm just researching, but I, I accomplish this. So I do this. It's so, yeah, mm -hmm. there's a lot to be said about it's all about managing. And, yeah. and anybody else that knows me recently uh, in the past few years uh, knows that I'm big about expectations. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, Dr. you are. Dr. Johnson also mentioned that expectations earlier. If you you have to set appropriate expectations, if you're going to set expectations, they have to be appropriate. And so, but you, they, you should tie in with those expectations, your goals, rewards, your, but to reach those expectations and those goals and to get those rewards, you need to focus. It's all, it, it's all a big, all a big, it, it, it all goes together, all of it, mm -hmm. all of it. 
So I just I, I wanted to bring that up because by no means would I am I suggesting that somebody just only do the work no. and have no you'll burn out fast. Yeah. I've seen it. It's happened to me. I've seen it happen to others. Um, and it's not healthy. <laughs> There's, it is not healthy. Um, so I think the word healthy also needs to be tossed around with this as well. True. Yeah. You know, all work and no play makes exactly. Jack a dull boy. No boy. But, that, but the key is being able to manage it, just like Ben says here, if you manage it. Um, yes. So. Um, and we'll also share some bullet points on how to be focused and why you should be focused later on. But we definitely love to hear from everyone about your thoughts. So. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me scroll back up to the top. Uh, like I said, we'll do some of the questions now. Um, let's see. Uh, Fernando, apologize for calling you Alonzo with an A. <laughs> hey, <man. laughs> I've gotten some really over my over my life. I've gotten some really obscure derivatives for my name so and when i was little if anybody remembers the the muppet show just think about that little purple purple puppet <laughs> that's yeah. what i got a lot of so hey alonzo you know, i always tell my students it doesn't matter what they call you or what title you have as long as the check doesn't bounce and the money's good there it is <laughs> i can go for that all day Dr. Johnson. <laughs> so fernando asked this and this came in when we were talking about not focusing. Um, so this was at the very, very early part of the show. Fernando asked the, the, the million dollar question. Mm. What is the root cause of people not being able to, oh, to focus? I, 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 talked about, I talked about it a little bit earlier about the distractions. Yeah. Um, so I, I've already shared my thoughts about how easy it is to get distracted, how the opportunity mm -hmm. presents itself to step away from the thing that's hard and do something that's easy. So I, I'd like for you guys to, to chip in on that. I think in my, my standpoint is, or my viewpoint is this, lack of preparation and setting goals that are unrealistic. And then once you get in the middle of something, you say, well, I'm not prepared to do this. I don't have realistic goals. I don't have support from family members or anybody else that that's important to me. You don't become focused, and finally, you just lose that drive and that motivation to accomplish that goal. And you ultimately either, you know, for lack of a better term, quit. Yeah. And fail. I'm going to interrupt. I just got a message on Slack from a student. Um, so, if you're one of our students, if you want us to do a class about this as well, whether it's me or, or Alonzo or Dr. Johnson or, or a combination or anybody uh, but if you want to if you want us to do a class about focus because as i was preparing for this show i was like this would make a great class but i wasn't going to put it out there but i just got a message on slack uh from one of our students about how they were struggling with this and that they really appreciate oh yeah so but uh, she said she, she's already hearing me she said oh my gosh yes my let goodness. us know in the chat box let us know in the chat box if you want a class uh if you want us to do a class about to dive just just keep diving into this yeah. and i'll be happy to make sure that that happens but just let us know It'll in the chat awesome. box if you're a student um we'll do that like i said I, I just i got a message from a student saying how much they appreciated it so i'm glad to hear that um i know i still owe you this this topic lady godiva goes right along with saying no <laughs> yeah being yeah. able to focus requires the ability to say no you have I to promise, I promised Lady Godiva that we would do a class about saying no. And no, I still gotta, no means I gotta no. Put it together. That is a very abstract class, so it's it's taking me mm -hmm. some time to put it put it together. Um, but Alonzo, uh, your thoughts about the root cause? Yeah, I, I think we've spent a lot of time on the mental, and but I think it goes hand in hand to consider the physical as well. It's like, are you getting enough sleep? Are you waiting? Are you prioritizing what's important? towards the back end of the day when you're tired, run down? Um, are you not setting, uh, are you exercising enough where you have the mental and physical fortitude to do what's necessary to get this done? 
Um, we already talked about multi reducing the multitasking or redefining what that multitasking is so you can execute. Um, removing the distractions, what these gentlemen were talking about. Um, I'm thinking about also meditation. Take some time at the beginning of the day to focus on what your intentions are for the day, what you want to do, and that get that physical and mental checklist together so you can do that. Also, during your daily grind, when you're in the, in the office all day, take a break, go outside, do a couple of a lapse here and there, refocus your mind in a quiet environment, much like what Dr. Johnson has said about the, uh, the room that he goes into, same thing. Find some listening music to focus on, meditation music, whatever floats your boat. Just take some time out and isolate your mental and physical capacities to somewhere else where you're able to, to gather all your eggs and put them back in the basket. And I'm thinking about using a timer. Um, I Ooh. forgot what that, yeah, I forgot what that, that, that strategy is where it's called, uh, uh it's called pom pom Pompadour, pom Pompadour. It might be Pompadour, but it might be this box strategy where you set a timer to do certain goals to get them done. You know, I don't know how effective that is. I cannot remember the name of it for the life of me, but I'll, I'll find out and I'll add it into the Slack channel. And like I said, eat well, eat healthy. If you eat junk with sugar and all this other stuff and then you crash while you're trying to get the work done, then the productivity goes out the window as well. So it's a matter of your mental and physical working hand in hand to me to ensure that you're able to get the task done and have the fortitude to do it. Uh, I agree. I agree. It's all, it, it all, it, I'm just going to sum it up in one word that sounds like being prepared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like a, proper sounds like preparation a prevents poor performance. Yeah, exactly. Angela's got a good question here. We talked about Angela way, always brings the questions. Uh, I like, I like, I like his second part because we, we talked about the first part of it. How does multi tech multitasking affect focus? So I, I want us to uh, focus on the, no pun intended, but I want us to focus on the, on oh, the second part here is focus. And I've got, I, I, I love this is focus more about results than the way we do the work. So I think it depends on what it is that you're focusing on, but I really think a lot of people get distracted and focus on the, the event. Or, or, or the accomplishment or, or the milestone. Like if you're, let's say you're focusing on your PhD. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that those 50% of people that didn't complete it, they focus too much on the PhD and not the process that it took. And so they didn't, they didn't have the right mindset. Um, not to get cliche with with mindset and focus all together but um obviously results matter but if you if you sacrifice focusing on the process and focusing on the the pieces that it takes to get the results then you may not reach the results that you desire well you know i'm thinking doesn't dedication and focus go hand in hand? It, it doesn't, I can't see one being existing without the other. So I think if you're multitasking, like the example that I said before, if you're round rob a round robin scenario of five buckets, a cup here, a cup there, and you're going through and just adding one cup in turn of water focus fo versus focusing on that one bucket, Filling it up, I think it's going to be faster, more effective than you trying to do all these different things at once. Now, if you're multitasking and you stop one project to start another, it seems that maybe you might, you may, depending on what the circumstances are, you might be able to do it your way because it helps you to resolve 
or meet those projects and finish them the way you need them to. But ultimately, if you're not able to apply that singular focus to one thing, I think the determination goes down, the focus goes down, and possibly the standards of execution you want to have for that project. So, and then it talks about, and I'm answering the second question, is focus more about... Uh, about uh, oh, oh, um, never mind. He's got an even he's got an even better one after this. Okay, so, well, yeah, let's no, no, let's no, 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 no. I thought I thought you were about to say you were going to answer the next comment, but yeah, yeah, I want to answer the second part of this question. Sorry. Okay, yeah, let's yeah. see it. Keep no, keep going, Alonzo. And I'm saying, okay, the focus is more about the results than the way you do work. So, isn't the results predicated on the way you do work? If you you know. You can't get clean water out of a dirty faucet anymore. You can get excellence out of um, unfocused work and effort. So how are you going to be able to apply that excellence via focus for an expected in and standard to the project or outcome? So that's kind of like a, you know, answering a question with a question, but it's something that that you need to ponder. I want to add to a little bit, probably along the same lines that Alonzo was going here. When I read this part, it's focused more about results and the way we do the work. Um, it kind of goes back to that first part of the question, too, multitasking. You know, the way that the way that I look at things, and of course, by no means am I an expert on anything on that. But I don't like to, when I talk about multitask, like I said, task one, task two, task three, task four. If I'm trying to fill all those buckets of water up at one time then I'm afraid that a lot of times what's going to happen is we're, the results are going to wind up being something that is known as satisficing. We get to a point where we're satisfied with what we've done, but it may not be the best that we should be doing, okay? Because I'm spending too much time trying to fill all the buckets up. Whereas if I'm focusing on one bucket, I'm going to give it my best effort. I'm going to dedicate all of my time and my resources to that effort then my results will probably be a lot better rather than just being satisfactory. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is a term that we use in management. Like we, well, we, we look for a solution that just satisfies to me. That's being, um, I don't know, lazy a little bit use on you on not using our resources wisely. So again, the way I look at it is I'm going to focus on task a, I'm going to do the best that I possibly can. Then I'm going to move to task B. And I think maybe that's what Alonzo was saying. And we may yeah. be on the same page or we may be oh, in yeah. different countries. From I a, think from a third party, y'all are on the same page. I, yeah. We're on the same page, Jock J. Yeah. We are on the yeah. same page. All right. So Angela's got a, got a follow-up question. It says, how are focus and attention related? And mm. I'm going to take, take a step back from this one. Uh, for example, focusing on family may mean making our loved ones a priority, but not necessarily putting all of our attention 24-7 on them. What are the thoughts about focus and attention and the relationship? Angelo does it again. <laughs> I think, uh, and, and Dr. Johnson, please please go first. If you have something um, you want to say, I, I have some thoughts on it, but definitely want, want our guests to, to have the floor. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, my point is this, uh, you must have a family and life work balance, yes, but I take that a bit further, you know, I, I really think, although Miss Johnson may not agree with this a lot of times, but I think family comes first in the discussion, Alonzo, you, I believe you have children or a child, I had one, and um, I would put my focus on my family, going to the, all those ball games and soccer practices and all that kind of good stuff and helping Miss Johnson do what she wanted to do. And there were times that I just stayed up late at night. It'd be midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning doing what I needed to do. But I would get my work done or either I would get up early in the morning, four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning and work for two or three hours. But to me personally, the family focus or the, it, it was more important because, you know, I'm going to tell you this, you know, you can be replaced at work tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. If you, if you die, they'll have an ad out the next day, you know, being replaced at home, you know, 
Uh, although I will be the first to admit that I'm not always the best at that, but I think the family is, is more important than the work itself. So yes, I, the, the family, you know, work life and that type of stuff, you got to have a balance. You got to determine what's important to you. And, uh, and I think you cannot make that decision alone. I think that comes with a conversation with those that are depending on you that are in your life and you have to have those conversations. And more importantly, and I don't do this very well sometimes, you gotta listen. Yeah. You know, you got you gotta listen. You know, I always jokingly say that Miss Johnson nags and nags and nags me. It's because sometimes, you know, when we have those conversations, it's basically ninety five percent of the time it's something I said I would do and I didn't do, or it's something I did and I shouldn't have done. So um, but to that first part, focus and attention, oh Lord, that goes hand in hand. No doubt about it. You got to pay attention to what you're going to do. If you're not, you're going to not go focus at all. Yeah. You can't get focused if you're not paying attention to what you're supposed to be doing, organizing, developing, controlling, all that kind of good stuff. That's just my, my two cents worth. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a full dollar right there, Dr. Johnson. And I, I agree. Um, how are focus and attention related? Let's focus on my daughter. She needed help with work. I wasn't paying attention to some research that she needed me to do because I wasn't focused and I spent a good amount of time on something she couldn't use because I wasn't paying attention. Alternatively, my, uh, my younger son, he wants me to spend time with him and making your loved ones a prioritized, but not necessarily putting in our attention. They know when you're not giving them their full attention. And they don't like it at all because they feel like um, they're going to, he said, is your work more important than me? And I'm like, wow, you know, um, let me go ahead and put the quality time. And that's where quality time comes in is because if you're, you know, what's the difference between you having a conversation versus you to, you know, someone that you care about in the same room, but you eyes are on the phone in your separate worlds. I mean, what is the, the quality in that? So understanding that prioritizing the time with your loved ones, or at least having a conversation like with my wife, she's so wow. She's, she's very talented and smart in her field. She's off the chain and we both are very good at what we do, but our quality time would be like, okay, the kids are taken care of. We have to work a little later than usual, but we have our own time where we're sitting next to each other on the sofa. She's on her laptop. I'm on mine. We're, we're talking, we're shooting, you know, we're talking and cracking jokes, but we're still are able to provide that productivity necessary for us to devote our tasks. It's those type of styles. It all depends on what your, um, languages with your spouse, your significant other or whatever, or being able to uh, find a way to communicate. This is what I have to do. Let me prioritize some time of day, you know, or evening where everyone is happy, but I'm still able to be productive. It's, it's not a, a set science in stone, but it's something that requires communication, commitment, dedication, and focus at the right times. What about you, Chris? Uh, I said I was going to take a step back on this one, but I mean, I guess let, let, take, me, take, let, I let, I, let me bail him out. Let me, let me he can, he can, I he wonder can why of, that's the question. He can think a minute and everything. Um, you know, Alon, I, I agree with exactly what Alonzo was saying and everything, but let me tell you what I've got. You know, I, I've often say this, you know, that I married the best woman in the world, all others are second rate, and that just makes all the women mad. But anyway, let me let me give you an example. When I tell Marilyn what I need to do or what I need to get done, constantly she is saying, don't forget. You got to do this. Don't forget. You, you know, you got this project that you're working on and so forth. When you get that type of comment from your significant other, partner, wife, husband, whatever, when you get that type of commitment from them, then you know you've got their support and then you know you can be successful. For example, she'll say, what time are you going to be home today? And I said, well, round two. I came home at 3.30. I didn't get fussed at. She didn't huff and puff. And she's every day when I come home, she says, after we sit down, 
well, tell me about your day. Mm. You know, and sometimes that's just explaining what I did. And a lot of times it's, I've got somebody to vent to and buddy, I can vent. <laughs> we can't, we can't discuss the terminology I use here. So yeah. we'll let, now that Chris has had time to think, well, we'll let him go, you know, throw it out. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to take you back on just a couple of things. I'm not going to have any, uh, any new thoughts to add to this. Uh, first thought that's a that's a two-way street that's the that it's important that that's not and i know this uh, and, and from from your experience but i just want to make sure that everybody else knows that what, what he just explained has to be two ways it's not just a one-way thing that's um and so back to what you were talking about earlier uh and we we say it, we say it all the time is that and and I, I don't like the word balance, uh, work-life balance, because that implies that you're you're trying to make mathematical calculations to what's best and what's not best. But mm -hmm. harmony, work-life harmony, figuring out how to make it work out. Um, it, it takes time, effort, and energy. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you're a family of two, like I am, with me and my wife or family of four, four, right, Alonzo? Four, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and then also there's not just me and my wife. There's me and my wife, my mom, my dad, her mom and dad, grandparents, aunts, uncles, friends, all kinds of other factors. Uh, so trying to balance all of that <laughs> is impossible. But trying, but, but doing what, is necessary to make it harmonious is an ongoing constant uh, piece of work that doesn't ever have to be perfect mm. uh, you're never going to make it perfect it, it's it's it, it's just not um so uh, I, I don't have too much to add just because i have less harmonizing to do so i don't have much <laughs> to, to do i've got i've got yeah. I, uh, you know, I've got I've got less harmonizing than the rest of the people on the panel do. So that, that's why I said I was going to take a step back on that one. Um, yeah. So I want to move on to the next to another question here. Uh, I'm going to be very blunt, straightforward, and I'm sorry if it offends anybody. <laughs> Maroon says there are no there are so many distractors like social media apps, Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. How to overcome these distractions? Don't do them. Turn them off. Turn them off. Delete them, delete, them out your, delete them out your phone. When we get to our when we get to talking about how to improve your focus and improve your distract or the, reduce your distractions, that's on my list. Ignore yes. them. Get rid of them. Don't have them. Uh, I mean, obviously, for a lot of us, we, we getting rid of something like a Facebook or a LinkedIn or something, it, it's not it's not realistic. But Get rid of those notifications. Yeah, silence. Turn them off. Turn them Your off. Your computer gives you the option for desktop notifications. No, that's the devil when it comes to trying to focus. Um, yeah. So don't have desktop notifications. Don't have push notifications. Don't have all these things. Because if you do, they're going to constantly come at you. Doesn't mean that you don't have to have the applications. You can still have Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and TikTok, and you could have a successful profile on all of these and have millions of followers, but you don't have to have the notifications on. Mm -mm. You don't have to set aside time, just like Dr. Johnson sets aside time to go to the library, set aside time. I'm going to check my social media mm -hmm. this time of day, every day. If it's urgent, they call me. If it's not a phone call, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Same with emails. Now, granted, I can't set aside emails for once a day, but don't check emails until a certain time. Like, don't check emails at 7 o'clock in the morning. Check your emails at 9, 10, whatever it might be. Don't check your emails at 7 o'clock at night. Check your emails at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock at the end of the day, and you're done. If it's urgent, somebody will call you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but it goes back to, and like I said, I'm just apologizing again. If I'm harsh, I'm harsh, but I'm passionate about this. You can ask Chow, you can ask Leo, you can ask others on the team. I've point blank told them, set aside some time, and that's the only time of the day that you check things because yeah. otherwise you're never going to accomplish anything if you're constantly checking your emails, constantly checking your 
Facebook notification. They can, like, yeah, see? <laughs> That's that's diagram number one right there. <laughs> huh? College I have football. No, huh? Uh, huh? I have hey, no hey. sound on mine. Co college football is going to change their clock rules. Huh, that's interesting. Let me read about that. Yeah. Oh, so, SEC, I'm realizing that boomers are probably going to have easy mode in the SEC. Oh, I thought they were talking about like boomers like Dr. Johnson. They mean like boomer sooners like Oklahoma. Got yeah. it. Okay. Hey, I got my Medicare card. I'm happy. Yeah. See, like that's, I, I just I just went to it when I wanted to go to it. I didn't get a notification, but if I had my notifications on, oh my bling, god. Bling bling yeah. bling bling. So, so how do you how do you how do you get how do you overcome them? Turn them off. Set aside a certain time every day. Once a day, maybe twice a day, beginning of the day, end of the day, but not exactly at the beginning of the day and not exactly at the end of the night. But yeah. and look, uh, my, look volume, my volume on my phones is always off. My yeah. ringer is always off. Everything's oh. down. I have to actually look down there and see if there's a number every once in a while on Messenger, or is that what it's called? Text. I got, a, I got, I got, a, I got, a, I got an Apple Watch uh, for cr like Christmas or something like that, and I, I, I paired it with my iPhone, and I, I started my wrist just started vibrating non-stop 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 i had all my things paused on my phone <laughs> but they were still coming through on my watch all of a sudden mm -hmm. it's like for years i haven't been getting my notifications on my phone so i didn't know what the heck was happening like freaking you out <laughs> <laughs> but you know i, I want to share room look at it this way i'm not sure if you your goals are becoming a cloud architect or a cloud engineer or if you're a student of ours however Go find whatever job that you want on Glassdoor. Find out what the salary is. Find out, do a breakdown on what the daily uh, salary, you know, when you do the uh, break it down, how much you're going to make on a daily basis or maybe even hourly basis, and then subtract that to the amount of time that you're spending on social media. I think you're going to really look at it and say, this is the amount of money that I'm losing, ergo opportunity costs. Yeah, I, I love that. I love that. How much is it going to cost me to spend increments of time throughout the entire day that you to, can't get back? That you can't get back because, mm -hmm. and, and I'm just, I'm basing this off of people that I know. Hours a day on their on their on their their phone, and I'm not I'm not go, I'm not I'm basing that off of people that I actually interact with in person. I know they're spending hours on their phone. Imagine what you could do with those hours, even if it's not anything about your career. Yeah. Imagine what you could do. Imagine the books you could read. Imagine the the things that you could do outside or with family or 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 maybe make uh, learn how to cook if you don't know how to cook, so that you can make meals for your family. You could garden. You could. Fix the house. I'm just like, like there's so many. Once I turned all those things off, the amount of time that I got back, because I used to wonder where all the time went. Like I had all the time in the world to go skateboarding and play basketball and ride four wheelers. And it seemed like I just had endless amounts of time. And then somewhere all the time just disappeared. And I thought it went to work, but <laughs> no, it did not. It went to uh, distractions. So, like I said earlier, hard versus easy. And is the hard worth it? Most likely, yes. So uh, I'm glad I'm glad somebody asked that question because that is that's the thing that nobody wants to talk about is how much this the technology is robbing from us uh, in the form of distractions. And don't get me wrong, that it's not bad. It is good that I can find a TV show that I love at the click of a button that is good in a measured, managed way. <laughs> it's good that I can connect with people that I, that, that I went to high school with and, and, and stay in touch with them in a, in a good, managed, healthy way. But just 
endless scrolling. Yeah. It's not, not good. Um, yeah, it's yeah. We could do a whole We could do a whole show about this. A yeah. Um, I liked this one. Um, where did it go? Two back-to-back -back comments. Maybe the immediate reward is more powerful than the long-term reward. And multitasking is great, but it's pointless unless you know how to prioritize those tasks. Those yeah. two go together. That's why. That's why I was like, yeah. maybe that short-term thing is more more powerful. It maybe is. It does need to be it's number that, one. It's that <laughs> easy gratification that everyone wants to feel some sort of accomplishment, whether it's hollow or not. But when you think about what it takes, that stick to itiveness to do that, it's like, okay, I was able to go to the movie. I feel good about myself. But at the end of the day, ultimately, that long term goal is sacrifice. So do you want to go to the or, or rather, let's let's look at this. You want to go to the bar and hang out with your friends short-term gratification or you want to over a long-term goal have enough money from this job to invest in your own bar to do what you want to do so you think about what you're giving up versus what you possibly could have it's that it's that focus that we need all the time yeah but but if you do encounter something that's easy or quick yeah that does have a high actual high reward not just a perceived high reward. That's where prioritization comes in. Yeah. Maybe maybe something that is quick and easy does have a high return for you. Like I get a phone call from the publicist that says uh, Forbes wants a quote from you. And I'm like, okay, uh, I've got something in 15 minutes. It takes five minutes. Okay, I'll do it right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, it, can, it has to be right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but... It, so like so yeah it maybe sometimes the short term does have a higher actual value but a lot of the times the short the short quick things don't have that that higher so you have to have that 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 ability to to assess and not and not just blanketly say oh that's easy it's not going to have a high value well no not necessarily use your discriminatory brain and and, and analyze it and prioritize like Ben is saying here so I thought that I thought that was important that that we do it we do address it. Maybe a short term thing is quick. It is yeah. is valuable. <laughs> and I guess yeah, it goes back to that opportunity cost. What do you stand to lose by trying to go for that low hanging fruit today? So I mean, we're talking about a, a, a quote, uh, a opportunity to publish something for Forbes, or spend fifteen minutes on Facebook. Yeah, uh, the, one is better than the other. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to say the Facebook has value, but to to partner with uh, Forbes or to partner with Dr. Johnson on a publication, and it only takes 15 same amount of time as Facebook, no brainer. Yeah, I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do this. It's simple. It's easy. It has a high return value. <laughs> but uh, and then I'll and then I'll make sure to, to get back to my list, my prioritization. Yeah. So. Yeah. You've got to keep in mind that life happens. Things are going to pop up. You can have the best task and have all your goals laid out. Things are going to happen. And you've got to be able to prepare for those. Okay? So yep. just because you don't get to accomplish a task at a particular time that you set doesn't mean everything's lost. Right. You know? But you if, you've got, if you've done the preparation and you've got your list and you've got your, your goals, then you can get back into it. I mean, back yeah. into it. If you don't, then it's you got to start all over, and and that's where that's where it becomes detrimental. You know, somebody mentioned earlier. I don't know. Maybe they did, or maybe I'm dreaming. Is that distractions, things that distract you from, and everything. One of the things that I found personally that that is distracting to me, and that is a huge time waster, is people will ask me for a meeting, and they'll say, "I will come to your office to meet with you," and I go, "No." No, Absolutely no, not. No. I will come to your office that way because <laughs> yes. I can leave. Yeah, I'm going to go in there. We're going to address it. I'm not going to talk about football, baseball, all that kind of good stuff. Mm -hmm. Get to the point, answer your question, and I'm going to leave. It is very difficult to get people to leave your office. You know, they want to sit there and talk about everything because obviously one or two things, they don't have anything to do or they don't want to do their job and they're interfering with my time. 
I kind of get my grumpy pants on then. See, I clean that up. You like that? Kind of, kind of get grumpy every once in a while. So, for me personally, I will go to their office, have that conversation, then I can leave. It's well, kind of like going to family reunions, go in your own car so you can leave. You know. <laughs> yeah. See, and that's that's an unfortunate yeah. thing with today's virtual virtual environment, because I'm not like. I actually have to hang up on somebody. I, I yeah. can't. I, I can't just like excuse myself. I, I, I got, like I can't out of the office. <laughs> but I, I, I like your point. Um, the opportunity to 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 get out is is always a good opportunity, good thing to have. Um, I tell you what, like on Zoom meetings and that type of stuff, I always open up my Zoom meetings with you know if you know how much I dislike those sometimes, but yes. I open up with. Now I've got about 20 minutes that we can spend together. You know, mm -hmm. I'll let them know. And then I'll tell them, Hey, we got just a few more minutes and I'm going to have to go. We may have to continue this later. Yep. You know, because, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times it's simply because they will get off subject. Yeah. You know, we, we answer the question, then they won't talk about everything else. Well, you know, I only got this amount of time right now. We can schedule something later, maybe. <laughs> so, yeah. LK ask, and I think there's a typo here. How important is discipline? And I think they mean in reaching your goals because the R is right next to the T on the keyboard. Sacrosanct. Um, yeah. I think everything that we've been talking about tonight has discipline infused it, it, it throughout everything that we've said. The discipline to for Dr. Johnson to, like, as I said earlier, you, you may not have been here, but his discipline to turn off his computer turn his chair around, walk out the door, walk down the hallway, go out of the building and across the campus, walk into the library, shut the door, sit down, and not let anybody distract him. That takes discipline. And, and then to regularly do that. The discipline to not do notifications on your phone or on your computer. The discipline to actually stick to the plan that you develop for yourself. It all requires discipline. If you don't have the discipline to follow through on the commitments that you've made to yourself and to others, because as Dr. Johnson said earlier, and as someone in the chat box said, having accountability partners, if, if you make commitments to somebody other than just yourself, it makes it stronger. Yeah. But you have to have discipline. Discipline is the only way that you're going to be able to accomplish any of this. Yeah. Um, and ultimately, so. it's bad for your brand, too, when you yeah. don't stick, you don't do what you say and say what you mean. And I can I can vouch for that. I've I've had difficulties with that in my past, uh, it, it, but it stemmed it stemmed from too much, too much commitment, too much without planning and preparing. And as Lady Godiva will appreciate me not saying no. <laughs> if, so, but that's no. that's a part that's a part of discipline. You're being able to to discern when you need to say no. Or if you can't say no, how are you going to accomplish it? And you have to have the discipline to stick to it. Again, like I said, I've I'm not the haven't been in the best in the past. I'm always a work in progress. Um, we all are. Definitely. That discipline is a big factor. Something that I think is important that we that, that we may be missing a component here is, you know, yes, we're focused on our goals. Yes, we're focusing on doing a good job. And we've set goals. We set time frames. We've made commitments to the others. But like I said earlier, life happens, and sometimes things get off track. The most important thing that you can do is if things are off track and you're not going to reach your goal or you're not going to be able to accomplish something that people are looking for is to communicate. you got to pick that phone up and you got to call or you got to yeah. text or whatever, however yeah. you folks communicate. Very yeah, true. You know, myself, I like to make a phone call because I want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation when something's not going to come across real good. And I like to say, hey, you know, I know I said I was going to be able to get this done at this time or my goal was to get it done. It's just not going to happen. Don't give excuses. They don't want to hear the excuses. Mm -hmm. Just it's not going to happen. I'm going to make it up to you. You know, a lot of times what I will do is I will talk, forgive my language, but I'll toss them a bone, you know. Since I'm not going to be able to accomplish this goal, let me give you a little discount. Let me give you something extra, you know, whatever it is to try to make up for that. But, you know, you know, most people, 90 percent of them, once you communicate with them and let them know, hey, it's just not going to happen. Right. They understand because yeah. guess what? They've been there. 
Yep. You know, they have actually been there probably within the last day or two. They know exactly what you're going to talk to talk about. And as long as you have that communication with those individuals, you know, they're going to understand they will probably work with you. But, you know, focus is a good thing. Discipline is a good thing. But if you're not going to be able to accomplish it, you got to communicate. Most important skill that you can ever develop. Yes. The effective communication. I can't, Very true. I can't, I can't, I can't that's, that's dropped the mic right there. That's, yeah. that's, that's what holds it all together. Let me, let me, let me see if I've got, do I got <laughs> anything for that? Do I got any? Uh, <laughs> no, I, I don't have any sounds for that. Let's just go with it. There you go. <laughs> that's, that's the, yeah, the red I, solo I need to have the mic drop sounds. That was that the red solo cup of knowledge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Just make sure you put the right thing in the red solo cup for me. Yeah. <laughs> but it is so, it's that communication is, is key in, in every step of the word. Like case in point, like a lot of when I was doing my MBA and we had to do the team. Everyone had a portion of that paper at five, 6,000 word paper or whatever. And at the last minute, you say you can't do it. Why didn't you say something before unless you already had a preconceived uh, thought that I'm not going to be able to do it, but I don't know how to tell the team. At the end of the day, we're all stuck. So that proper communication and everything you do is going to be helpful so that we can all pivot, replan, refocus, and re-execute so everyone can still win. <clears throat> yeah. So Definitely. speaking of discipline and communication and expectations, uh, we should probably move on and talk, talk about the, the next part of our show because we did, I, I did make a commitment uh, and set an expectation that this year on, the, on, our, on our live streams that we're going to try and stick to our time frames. Yeah, uh, our normal time frame is six to eight Eastern time. So I'm going to try our best to stick to that. Um, so I know that uh, the next thing that we all want to talk about, and we've kind of been talking about it as we answer some of these questions, um, is uh, how to, I guess, improve your focus or mm. practice your focus or yeah implement focus how to make it happen um so let me let me get this off the off the screen there so so yes yeah, so i'm sure that we each have a list of things or, or, or things that i know a lot of them got a list um, <laughs> <laughs> I know Dr. Johnson, Dr. Johnson probably probably has some go-to uh tips so i know we've, we've all got some things so um let's just I don't want you to go through your whole list, Alonzo. Let's just go go through a couple of them, and, and we'll talk. I'll, I'll about go them. through a couple. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll focus more on the benefits as opposed to what people should stop doing. How about that? Mm. Like the bit, like the the bottom part of the list. Yeah, let's talk. Well, I, I like it all. I like it okay. all. Um, oh, but it, for the sake of of time, and then I'll be more than happy to add this document in the content sharing in, in, in Slack. All right. So let's, uh, what do you think? A lot of mine is going to be the top part of your list. So, okay. so okay. let's, let's go. And I might steal some of your list. So let's go with the benefits. I'm the negative guy. So I'm a, let, let, let me be the negative guy. <laughs> okay. So everyone, again, we've talked about the cause, the effects, the opportunity costs, but here we're going to share, about five or six bullet points about what the benefits are for focus. So those benefits are number one, you're gonna be useful for others. If you're more focused, you're more dedicated, you can get more done, you can get it, uh, and, and you're gonna get more quality of work completed, which is gonna be great for your manager, great for your team, great for your organization, great for those presentations when you're um, pitching architectural uh, solutions is going to work out for everyone or the engineer, which is communicating these detailed documents about uh, technological performance, also useful. You, your skills expand. You're going to learn how to do things more efficiently. You're going to be able to do things um, and maybe even teach things to other members of your team about how you became successful. And you can, you know, you can share that moving forward. 
And then with the uh, other benefit is that you're going to be clear and calm when you're focused. It's because you already know what to talk about. And it helps with what we've discussed in class is when you know what you know, you're very confident in communicating what you want to share with the audience, how you want to share it. You're able to tell that story and you're able to bring everyone along for the ride for the experience. So, and it also goes back to the point that when you know what you know, you're confident. So you're going to feel good about yourself. You're going to be fit. You're going to feel good about the overall outcome because you've planned for it. You focused on the details. You focused on the steps and the things that matter so that you have an expected outcome. And finally, with all of that, your confidence is going to grow, right? You're going to just really be strong in your positioning in whatever you do because your focus is there. You're not going to be all over the place wondering about how I'm going to do X, Y, and Z at the last minute because it creates nervousness. Um, and when you're nervous, you don't focus on the details. You're focusing on how do I get out of this, this situation that I'm in. So <clears throat> these overall benefits are what's going to be helpful for you in the long run and how you're going to be a better person and a better professional. Now, now for the quote unquote negative stuff from Chris. <laughs> no, 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 we'll, we'll let Dr. Johnson talk. Yes, it. yes. I, 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 say yes. Any, th any thoughts Jay, that you have? Sure. Yeah, okay. Any thoughts you have about how to improve or, or benefits or, or what to do, what not to do? What, what, uh, any last words, I, really? I, I, I agree with what Alonzo has said. <clears throat> However, there's something that I always encourage <coughs> folks to do is, you know, focus is important. But I'm also focused on continuous improvement. Mm. Okay, so we can improve our the way that we focus. And what I usually, and I know this may offend, as Christopher said, it, oh, excuse me, Chris, it may offend some people, but I'm going to be pretty direct. I think too many times that when people complete a project, that the one thing that they fail to do is to evaluate what they did, the good, the bad, the ugly. Those of you that are familiar with Clint Eastwood, there we go. But um, what I recommend that you do, too many times when we complete a project and it is successful, we are all excited. Everything's great. We did good. Um, then sometimes when we complete our project and things didn't go quite as well as we expected to do, you know, everybody says we need to spend time. We need to dig into it and see what we did wrong and so we can improve and that type of stuff. I agree. But here's what I think too many times that we don't do. We ignore those projects that we did very well on, that we knocked the ball out of the park. So why don't we evaluate, dig into the successful ones and try to replicate what we did when we were successful? If you identify the things that you did well as also the things that you don't do so well, then you can continuously improve. So I think too many times, once we complete a project, we go pat ourselves on the back, say, good job. And we end it there. You know, I had a good friend that used to teach marketing with me and she would say, she would look at advertising or sales. And she would say, you need to do what she referred to as a marketing autopsy. You need to split it open, peel it back, look in to see what you did right, what you did wrong. And once you identify those, then you can improve. And I think that works with focus, communication, mm -hmm. leadership, whatever you want to, what, whatever topic you're dealing with. If we don't evaluate what we did well and what we did not do so well, then I think we're doomed to, to repeat our mistakes. Okay. So look at everything and that will improve, hopefully will improve your focus or whatever subject you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Leadership, sales, you know, programming, I, I'm still you're trying not, to figure out what cloud just, architect is, but you know. Yeah. So you're, not just do, you're not just doomed to repeat your mistakes. You're doomed to not, to most likely not be able to replicate your success. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Exactly right. Very we spend true. too much time. We spend too much time looking at the negative. We don't look at the positive. We need to evaluate what we did well. Also, celebrate those successes. Learn from the failures. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure everyone is familiar with some some sports dynasty, whether it's a local high school team that's won, you know, every state championship for the past decade, or it's the Patriots 
New England Patriots or, you know, uh, are a soccer dynasty over in Europe or uh, things like that, guarantee you that they are not doing autopsies only on the losses. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you that they are doing exactly what Dr. Johnson just talked about. And same with the companies, same with businesses. You think uh, GE it only looks at the negative? Right. <laughs> um, you think Microsoft is only reviewing the negative things? You think Disney? Uh, there's a there's a reason Disney replaced their CEO as quickly mm-hmm. as they did. Yeah. <laughs> they realized that they were doing they were reviewing the negatives and the positives, and and because they were reviewing, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm using the word guarantee very loosely, but I guarantee you they looked at, the, at them regularly, and that's why within two years they, boom, done out of there, bring in the old guy. <laughs> But, but yeah, so, um, yeah, thank you for, thank, thank you for sharing that. So, um, I want to, I do, I want to take some time. Alonzo and I both came up with a list. I've got a cheat sheet here. I got Alonzo's list. So, uh, we got, but we came up with some, some tips, some ideas, uh, some ways to improve, uh, your concentration or your focus. So, um, and, and, I'm guessing these don't look like they're in any specific order on here. No. They're just, yeah. Fire um, away, Chris. Yeah. So, and, and I'm going to go through them together. I, I merged them together here. So, but I am going to ask you to speak to a couple of them, uh, probably. So, uh, the first one on my list is to set aside time to actually do things. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I talked about it earlier. Emails. Don't check your emails all day long. Maybe check your emails. If you know, dear, if it's during work, your work day, check your emails once an hour. Uh, probably not not a good idea to ch- to go the entire day without checking your emails, but check them once an hour, every two hours. What well, something that's healthy, so mm-hmm. that you're not constantly checking things. <laughs> The uh, in in the same in the same mindset as I mentioned this earlier, turn off the notifications. If you enable desktop notifications on your computer for your email, every time you get an email, it's going to pop up in the corner over there. And what is that? That's an opportunity for you to get distracted and go click. Same with your Facebook. If you if you if you do the desktop notifications. Every time something happens on your Facebook, it pops up in the corner and it click, I'm distracted. Okay. Uh, so set aside time to actually do these things. Like I said, it, it, they're a part of life. You're not going to get away from Facebook no. unless you completely give it up. Uh, but most people aren't because it's their connection to a lot of people. Uh, so just just set healthy boundaries with those things. True. Um Here's the difficult one for a lot of people. Take time away from your phone, your computer, your watch, your TV, the radio, everything. Actually take time away from it. I know Dr. Johnson, he goes walking. He doesn't have his phone with him. I think he started carrying it now. My mom made him start carrying it. But he, for 20 years... He didn't carry a phone with him while he was walking. Even even when he had us, even when we got him to switch from the dumb phone to the smartphone, he, <laughs> was, he left it in the car. He left it in the car, and, and <clears throat> so. But there's a lot to be said about just turning it all off. Not every day, not 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 like, uh, or, or if you do do it every day, don't don't recommend <clears throat> doing it for long periods of time every day. But maybe an hour a day, just 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 nothing get 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 away from it go in the kitchen go 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 do the laundry and then sit down don't Mm -hmm. don't sit down and watch netflix and do the laundry do the laundry and then just go sit and and be with yourself maybe read but not on a phone or a tablet just just get away from it um maybe uh, maybe it's at the end of the day you're going to bed you just disconnect from everything you know, if I had it my way, there wouldn't be a TV in the bedroom. But it's neither here nor there. Um, here's an easy one. 
when you're on your computer, work in full screen mode. Hit F11. Mm. Have, your, have whatever you're working on take up the entire screen. That way it gets rid of you. If you use F11 and get go in full, full screen mode, not just big window mode, you go in full screen mode, guess what disappears? The clock. <laughs> so maybe you don't need, maybe, you, maybe you've got a timer, but you don't have the clock in front of you. <laughs> Uh, but, but also by working in full screen mode, you don't have the other, you can't see the other windows. That's a simple, simple way. Um, and then I ran out of time on my list. So that's all I got on my list. Uh, Alonzo's list is a bit more, um, <clears throat> a bit more exhaustive. But to go back to my, unplugging, <laughs> I actually unplugged for an entire weekend. Uh, unfortunately, I think. Dr. Long, uh, Dr. Johnson, when when LC Lynn passed away, was there someone else that passed away that weekend, or was it just LC Lynn? Uh, real close was, um, oh my goodness, and, he drove the bus. He drove the bus all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Paul Lin Paul Lindsay. Yes. So Paul, Paul Lindsay. Lindsay. Yeah. So, unfortunately, while I was disconnected, two people that I knew as I was growing up that had. A, that arguably they were big, big influence on me growing up, not like massive, but well enough that I still remember things that they did to me when I was not acting like I should. Uh, so they, but they passed away while I was unplugged. If it had been urgent and it had been a family member, guess what? Dad would have called my wife. He would have called Alex and told me, but it wasn't urgent. It wasn't a family member. It wasn't somebody that that I knew, like that I was constantly in contact with, and that that was still a big part of my life. So he just sent me a message, and I saw it a day later when I when I plugged back in. But I unplugged for a whole weekend. It was the greatest thing in the world. I told everybody that I was unplugging, except Dad apparently. Uh, but I told all the people at work that I was unplugging. Everybody knew, so everybody knew what to expect. But it was a great thing. Like there was no distractions. I, I went to the grocery store and just got to watch people instead of watching my phone. <laughs> so that was interesting. But, but yeah, so there's a lot to be said about just taking a step back um, yeah. and clearing your mind so that you can then focus on things. So Alonzo's list. Eliminate distractions. Huh. Sounds easy. <laughs> That's why I put it first. <laughs> re re reduce multitasking. We talked a lot about that. I, I don't think we need to need to go into that one. Practice mindfulness and meditation. Talk about the mindfulness, Alonzo. Uh, yeah. What, is, what does that look like? Mindfulness. Let's. Unplug. Let's take a breath. You know what you have to do. You know the clock is ticking, creates pressure. So take a break. You know, this mindfulness, either it can start at the beginning of the day. I take some time to myself and focus. I'm thoughtful about what my execution is for the day. So, and it goes a lot with what you're saying. I'll, I'll be really brief is focus on the good that you've done. Focus on your progress. Focus on um, your successes and what you've done. And use that as energy to propel you, propel you into the into today to say, I'm going to be just as successful as I was yesterday or whenever that that milestone was. Or if you weren't, say, I am determined to meet my goals today. If you see it in your mind and you can meditate and focus on these goals, realize it in the real world so that you can move forward and you can do be determined. In what you're doing, focus on what you're doing, focus about focusing basically, so that once it's time to go, you're ready to move and you really and you're able to meet meet your goals and make it happen. Yeah, uh, I like that. Focus about so, focusing, it's, it, it's down, it, it builds it builds on what I was talking about yeah. a lot. It, it is so I, 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 just, I wasn't sure. Uh, your next one, I love it. Get more sleep. Yeah, I don't do a, I don't get enough. And it doesn't help that I'm um, I'm a partial uh, insomniac either. I think I'm, I'm gonna. I think I would l recommend that we adjust that from more to appropriate. Yeah, because I'm, too, I'm much, too much, right too much has the same effect as too little. So, appropriate amount of sleep, I think, okay. is, is 
is just because again more might be if i'm getting seven and a half hours i'm getting the appropriate amount but so if i go more then i'm gonna have the same effects as if i got four <laughs> Man, I, I wish i could i could sleep that long i wish no oh, i can't i don't i don't get seven and a half but i'm saying like if i got seven and a half but but that might not be necessary for like some people five is fine six is fine but but there's a lot of science behind the too long that is yeah it is yeah uh, you just said this uh, inadvertently. I think choose to focus on the moment. So mm. focus on the focus. <laughs> focus. Like don't get off in Wonderland or Timbuktu or into the forest. Focus on the tree, or focus on the forest, not the tree. What it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Your dad has the the awesomest deadpan expressions I've ever seen. <laughs> Yeah. In case you wonder, my expressive Been 41 years. My, my expressive <laughs> facial features do not come from him. <laughs> I don't see how, but I'll I'll leave it to the Johnsons to break that down. Yeah. Um connect with nature, number seven. I like that. Because just getting outside of wherever you current wherever your current situation is. Kind of along the lines of my unplugging. Um, train your brain. What, 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 let's talk about that one for a second. What do we mean by that? Well, if you're going to set out to do something, make sure you're intentional in your thought process. I'm going to do this this way for this set amount of time and get that mental muscle memory to be able to do what you need done when you need to do it and not make excuses or be distracted by what people are saying, why they're saying it. Um, I'm doing something and then the phone or the, 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 some prompt comes up about a new TV show trailer or whatever, anything that throws you off your game to get things done, get the mental fortitude to say, I need to do this. Excuse me. I'll call you back turn it off, do whatever, and be in the moment. Focus on the focus. Train to focus on your focus is basically what it is. Exercise. I like that one. Yeah, and I, I, the next one, I like your little caveat here. Listen to music. That one may not work for everyone. No, yeah. That works for me, but I, I do understand that may not work for everybody. Yeah. So, um, but I'm sure there's other alternatives similar to that that induce that that bring the same benefits. It also probably depends on the type of music, also. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it it some you know there's meditation music you can find it all over YouTube on whatever oh, yeah. floats your boat. Either it could be um, a cappella or something, just instrumental music, whatever it is that helps you to set that background for you to focus try it out see what works for you see i like jimmy buffett but i couldn't listen to jimmy buffett because then i'd be thinking about being on an island somewhere in cheeseburger like, look, looking for my lost shaker and the cheeseburger you know Feel some of my favorite things <laughs> yeah so my lost shaker is salt's missing so but uh, so yeah i wouldn't be able to listen to jimmy buffett but yeah i could listen to the right type of music eat well Set daily priorities. Create space for work. Okay, this one, this one, this one, this one. You, do you mean a physical space? Or mental. Okay, I think both are important, and I think both have gotten lost. Yes. In the past two years, in the past two to three years. And especially with the whole work, remote work thing. Yeah. That, that physical space to work out of. Because with me everybody is home you know yeah. my son is is virtual so my wife she works from works virtually i'm working virtually my daughter she is virtually in high school so everybody is here all the time and the only time that i get a bit of space from everyone is when i get up in the morning and go to the gym even if i don't feel like it and oftentimes those who work out it's not that you want to it's because you need to and you have to 
So find that space wherever it may be, however it may be, to plug in and and focus on that meditation and mindful uh, mindness and and all the other things. Everything in this list is is interconnected on why and how you should do it. And again, I'll be sharing this um, in Slack. Uh, and your last one is use a timer. Well, uh, you're not, yeah, that's your next last one. Your Second last one is switch task. This does not mean multitask. Make that clear. <laughs> uh, I've, got, I've got the use a timer. That, that definitely goes in line with a lot of the other ones, like the, like the training your brain, the the uh, taking breaks, the discipline and everything that we've talked about. So number two was redu reduce multitasking. And the last one is switch task, but that does not mean multitasking. So what are we talking about there, about switching tasks? Okay, switching tasks. And this means do a smaller task. And this is something that I should have emphasized. It's a goal, get the low hanging fruit, knock it out, bang it out, get, get it off your plate, go to something else. But remember, it's the difference between um, the bucket scenario that I mentioned. It's like, okay, one cup, I'll just put a cup in all of these and do in rotation. You're doing the work, but there's nothing getting done. So you're just kind of spinning your wheels versus focusing on one task, completing it, and then going to the next. And it's a lot of what Dr. Johnson had mentioned. It's like, I'm not doing it all at once but I'm setting smaller goals for myself to complete it and move forward in the overall um, uh, execution and overall goals that I want to complete. All right. So that concludes our list of how to improve your focus and concentration. But so I hope everybody's enjoyed the, uh, enjoyed the conversation tonight. Let us know in the chat box that you enjoyed it by putting yeah. hashtag tech career success and we'll know that you enjoyed it um and i just uh, I, i've done a lot of talking so i don't feel like adding anything else to the conversation um except for the i think that the biggest opportunity for people to improve their focus is to eliminate their distractions mm -hmm. And, I, it could I, and I understand that that is a <clears throat> monumental task for some. Mm, yeah. Uh, but I maybe you take a piecemeal approach to it. Start off simple. Start off with, okay, I'm going to set aside a certain amount of time a day to do this one thing. And then after you accomplish that and you've got that discipline down, then you add another one to it. Um, combine that with disabling the desktop notifications and disabling push notifications for social media applications. Disabling those notifications doesn't require any additional discipline from you. So uh, I think those would be, I think that that's a very good start for most people to be able to, 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 to reach their goals. So I just wanted to share that as my last word. If you can start to work on your eliminating of distractions with simple things like disabling the notifications and setting aside specific time to, to check them and, and sticking to that, I think that that's a great place for everyone to start. And a lot of people, that might be enough. Um, so I'd love to hear the last words from Alonzo and then from Dr. Johnson. And we will wrap up the show. Yeah. Well, we, just as I discussed, the, the bullet points that we have were added in Slack. I'm always happy to be here to make, uh, just have discussions, especially with these good men right here. And always remember to continue on with your success, both in the classroom at Go Cloud Careers community. If you're not with us, we'd love to have you. If not, just continue on your journey of success, no matter what that will be, so that you can reach your goals. All right. Thank you, Alonzo. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Johnson. 
Yes, I just want to say that I think this has been a very informative, you know, discussion tonight, and I think folks can take a lot away from it, you know. But um, there's a couple of things that I'd like to end with, you know, that, that, that um, we haven't discussed tonight. One of the things that a lot of times will rob you of your focus is being surrounded or being involved with negative people. You need to stay away from those folks. People that tell you, no, this can't be done, or no, you can't do that, or no, we don't, no, no, no. You know, that's not going to, you need to, you need to avoid those type of people. And another thing is, um, you know, I'm a long-term looking person here. So I'm hoping that some of the folks in here, or maybe the majority of these folks here, when, are going to advance into their careers. And one thing is you move up that chain in the organization that will help you with focus. It's to surround yourself with good people and identify those people that you can delegate tasks to. Because if you can delegate, I believe Alonzo will refer to them as long, low hanging fruit. You know, if you can delegate a lot of those tasks, then you will have the time, the energy to focus on the most important task, the big task. So my conclusion is stay away from the negative people. As you move up in the organization, learn to delegate the people that are capable, surround yourself with good people. That's that's all I got right now. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more with that. Yeah. That's, yeah. Negative or non-productive people. You don't want to be around the lazy ones either. Absolutely. Oh, I can tell you, we could have a whole session on how to fire people. I can, I'm good. I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, say, we'll, say, we'll say that one for another night. All yeah, right. really. so, I want to thank everybody for joining us. I hope mm. you've all enjoyed the show. Um, so we've got another great show coming again next week. Uh, we're going to be, I guess, in a way, continuing a, com a conversation very similar to this. We'll be talking about what it takes to become elite, uh, whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, to become elite at whatever it is you're doing, um, whether it's something in your professional life, your personal life, to be the best, what it takes to do that. And one of those things, ding, 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 is going to be focus. <laughs> I am fairly certain of it. So, again, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Alonzo. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Our pleasure. Hope it's always everybody good to you, Dr. Johnson. Oh, hey, if you're in our program, don't forget, check the schedule <clears throat> for class. Dr. Johnson and Dr. Long are teaching this Friday, so yes. don't, don't forget to make sure you come to class on Friday. Uh, they will be talking about how to make decisions. Isn't that, is that this week? I think that's this yes. week. Yeah, yes. how to make decisions. So... Make sure if it's you, not uh, this week, we're in trouble. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we'll find out. But all right, thank you, everybody. Have, have a good one, everyone. Great, have a great Take night. Care. Good night. Hello everyone, this is Elonzo. Want to know how to get your first cloud job? Then please register for our webinar. We'll teach you everything that you need to know and answer your questions along the way. Hope to see you there.